Question 10a. Without using a calculator, determine the value of, first of all we have 4 factorial. So remember that a factorial is just the product of all the positive integers less than or equal to n. So here for 4 we would have, for factorial that is, we'd have 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. 4 times 3 is 12, 12 times 2 is 24, and 24 times 1 is 24. Now for part two, we have three factorial times two factorial. So once again, three factorial is three times two times one, and we're multiplying that by two factorial, which is two times one. So remember that multiplying by one doesn't actually do anything to our product, so I can safely ignore them. So I have three times two, which is six, and six times two, which is 12. In part B, it's asking us to express 5 factorial as a product in four different ways. And so remember that a factorial, we could represent it as the multiplication of all positive integers less than itself. So I could write this as 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. That being said, once again, that times 1 doesn't actually add anything or multiply anything to my total. So I could just write it as 5 times 4 times 3 times 2. Now I could keep going with this because I know that 3 factorial is just 3 times 2 times 1, or just 3 times 2. So I could write this as 5 times 4 times 3 factorial. Or I could go even further and write this as 5 times 4 factorial. So there are quite a few different ways to represent factorials, and depending on what type of question you're solving, it might be easier to represent a factorial in one of these ways as well. Part C is asking us to complete the following. So 12 factorial equals something times 11 factorial. Well, based on the work we just did, 12 factorial would just be 12 times 11 factorial. And likewise for part two, eight factorial would just be seven times six factorial. Part D now is asking us to express the following as a quotient of factorial. So in other words, a division. So here I have 6 times 5 times 4. Now, if this were 6 factorial, it would be 6 times 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. But I don't see that times 3 times 2 times 1, which means it's been divided out. So in other words, the 3 factorial has been divided out of my total, which was 6 factorial. So if I want to get rid of those smaller numbers, like 3, 2, and 1, I can divide them by 3 factorial from 6 factorial. And same idea here for part 2. So 15 times 14 times 13 times 12. Multiplying by 11 or less is not there. So I know I'm dividing by 11 factorial. And dividing by what? Well, we started at 15. So we're multi where we have 15 factorial up top. So 15 factorial divided by 11 factorial. And now for part E, without using a calculator, simplify. First of all, 10 factorial divided by 7 factorial. So what I'll do here to start is just write this out. So I have 10 times 9 times 8 times 7. And I could keep going on that, but I'm going to leave the 7 as a 7 factorial. And the reason why is because I now have the same thing up above as I do down below. That 7 factorial I see in the numerator and the denominator. And whenever you have a number being multiplied or divided by the same thing, they cancel each other out. And so here this would just be 10 times 9 times 8. And 10 times 9 is 90. 90 times 8 is 720. And now for part 2, once again we can write it out in a bit of a longer way. So 8 factorial, I'm going to rewrite as 8 times 7 times 6 times 5 factorial, once again because I already have that 5 factorial down below. So I know if I have the same thing above and below, they'll end up canceling each other out. So here we go. So I have 8 times 7 times 6 up top, and then 3 times 2 times 1 if you'd like down below, but remember that times 1 doesn't actually do anything to the product. All right, so 8 times 7 times 6 ends up getting us to 336. And 336 divided by, well, 3 times 2 times 1 is 6. So this will end up being 336 divided by 6.
and that ends up getting to a final result of 56.